Toyota Verso um, alternator seems not to be working, the battery seems not to be charging. Right, so we're getting 39, 13, 10 off the battery uh, right now, with the car not running. So that's the car running. You notice the, uh, the charge light hasn't gone out, which is the first indication you'll know it's not working. Right, so you expect the battery to be making more than it was before the car was working. Now it's doing 12, 50, 12, 12, 3, 11, and then it's going down as the car uses the battery's power. So the alternator's definitely not charging. Loosen off the, the wheels while it's still on the ground. That has to come off. I've got to lift a little dig out the stair, lift that up, put a screwdriver, and then this has to come off. And then I'm going to have to take the, the hub off. So this has been bashed down here to get this wheel nut on. You're going to lift this little tab up. Thirty mil, quite deep on a half inch adapter. Right. Next, I'm going to remove these two bolts that hold the, the wheel assembly onto the uh, suspension strut. There, they're 22, uh, both sides. ABS wire just there, set an edge to it. There you go, that's it. Let's pop that off, freeze that up a wee bit. Just watch it because the brake line itself is still quite tight. Hopefully, there should be enough wriggle room in there to pop, push that sort of back through while bringing this out at the same time. Going to, to take this bolt off here because it means that that, that brake line is a bit tighter than I'd like. <laughs> Unclipped. The ABS wire, and I've taken off the, the brake cable on the hub assembly itself to stop this stretching too much. Seems okay. Ah, and I bet you can undo that one as well, can you? There you go, that's the whole lot done, done now. And that just allows that not to be stretched. I probably should have undone that completely at the beginning to stop the stretching. All right, I'm gonna take this plastic thing out of the way because it's going to stop me getting uh, getting something on the tensioner later and I need to release the serpentine belt to let the alternator up. This is the dryer shaft hanging off underneath and now there's a, like a stabilizing holder here. It has two 14 mil bolts, top and bottom. I need to get a, an edge in there to get between them. But if you're gonna be popping out the drive shaft and it's coming out of the gearbox, you wanna get something underneath to catch whatever's gonna spill. So that's the, the end of the drive shaft that goes into the gearbox. I'm going to try separating these two, the, the sort of the, the holder there, and that should have the effect of popping that out. There you go. That's it completely out. I said they ain't freed up anymore. Doesn't appear to be anything dripping out of it. Oh, 
Press the drive shaft out. You've got to slacken off the serpentine belt. Get to the tensioner here. All right, you can see it just, just there. That's the tensioner. It's a 22 open-ended spanner. Nothing, 22 mil open-ended spanner. Nothing else is going to fit up there. It goes anti-clockwise, so you bring the the adjustable wrench down towards you and just put it. Take some pull. I just slackened it to take it off the bottom bottom wheel. Ideally, if you've got the proper 22 mil spanner, it's going to be longer than this. That'll make your life a lot easier. Okay, so we can see the alternator in there. Get the belt off now. Now uh, that's slackened off in the big wheel. <laughs> Right, and I'm going to try and get into the, the bolts. It looks like there's two, two at the bottom anyway. Yep, definitely one at the top. So this is the, the new alternator here. Two things on the bottom here. There's one on the top, and you can get an idea of how it attaches because it's up in behind the engine, so it's very hard to get to. So this looks like a, a, an earth cable there, and then you've got the connector there, which is covered in rubber in the car. So that has to lift off. I don't know if it's got a tab. I'll find out when I go to put it off now. That's got what looks like a 10 mil bolt on it. And then there's a thread there. So I'll have to feel and see if anything's attached to that thread. So three bolts hold it on. I think they're, they're 14, but I'll check. And then these two connections here and possibly that one there. That's the, the alternator it is. Plus line is called. I don't know if you can see that. I'm just about to take the alternator off, so I'm going to just disconnect the, the battery here. Let's see that if that does it. There we go. Let's see if I can lift that off. There we go, that's a little plastic, plastic cap off. There. Uh, I should then be able to get in and get that 10 mil off. Let's have a look at this rubber one as well, see what the story is there. Looks like it's got a, a push button on it. Tricky enough to get to the top one, it was very hard to, to break off. So I had to use a half inch ratchet with an extension bar just to break off. They are 12 mil bolts. Okay, so just finishing off these last two here. Now that one's out and I just need to just get this one. It's hanging on by the wires now, so I'm just going to take the two bolts out here and see if I can get to those so the belts off and just see if I can get to those wires a little bit easier now to let's have a look at these not really not really no that's the alternator from under the wheel arch and you can see there's I've just got the 10 mil there. I think that's the earth cable that I'm undoing the 10 mil bolt on. 10 mil nut on rather. There's a nut and a washer. That's just going to come off there. Very, very hard to get up and see there. I'll just pop them off. Should now just be able to lift that earth cable off. Yeah, that's now off and out. Now, there's another one, another 10 mil right at the very top of the alternator screwed in. Had to take those two off, that one at the top off. They were all these three, one, two, three, were 12 mil. That one, 10 mil. Then there was one at the top, a little sort of holder one, that was also 10 mil. That was holding the two cables going to here and here. Now that had to come off as well before you had enough slack to, to get at this. This has a rubber uh, cover over it. The rubber cover has to be pushed back and then you push in the plastic lug here at the same time is lifting very very hard to do up the back of the engine so these are the two compared they do look the same that's the, the plastic plug that goes into the 
the brown thing at the top of the auto and there's a bit you press to get it off there very very hard though that's the bit that goes into the the, the, the square bit at the very very top 10 mil hard to reach and then that's the, like the earth cable that'd be the easiest one to reach it has a plastic cover on top of it okay just a there we go. But the, the drive shaft opening looks like there with the drive shaft out. It didn't drip or drop this one. That's because the, the car's tilted to the other side. Right, so these bolts here, there are one, two, three. I couldn't find the torque settings on her. So I'm just going to do them up to 30, which seems plenty. For me, they just need to be nicely tight. So. Let's just give them a go. Alright, that is the alternator fitted. Incredibly hard to get to. You can just see it just there. Um, so, yeah, just trying to get the belt back on now. That's better. That's better. Alright, I'm just gonna give this a quick clean and then put some gearbox fluid on the end of it and pop it back in again. I've put a wee bit of copper slip on that just to make sure that that comes out again easy enough next time because it's all bound up this time. Okay, so that's got a bit of oil on it now. Just noticing when I put this back to line this little divot up, there's a little hole in the top of the carrier there the top of the thing that allows the dry shaft to fix so just make sure that that's lined up with the top of that it's quite hard to see Fully in there, and that's met met there now. There's the drive shaft bent into a sort of to the wrong corner. There is the ABS sensor that should have been released, but I'm not going to do it now. Um, now that I've got it over the right side of the drive shaft, so the drive shaft has to go back into that hole there. It'll take a bit of bending up to get it back in. I don't know the correct torque setting on these, so 30 is sort of good enough for this size of bolt, I reckon. Please correct me in the comments if you know better. I'll get it right next time. Okay, so I've put that nut on just a little bit now, just to hold it there. I'll tighten it up in a sec. But what I want to do first is make sure that that new alternator is working and that the belt is staying on properly because if it isn't, all of this has been a waste of time. Right, now, the charging light has gone out there. See that? The light that was on the whole time has gone out. Right, 40.6, 40.8, 40.3, 40.4, 40.5. Right, it's charging, definitely charging. Titan to 153 newton meters torque, which is something like 
113 pounds per square foot. Right, so that, mind the ABS sensor for a sec. So if you're wondering where that goes, it sort of flops around there. It doesn't go like that, it goes on the other side like that. And then it presses against that, so you can see there. And then the ABS sensor then clips on top. All right, and then you put the 10 mil bolt in. They, they go into there and there, 14 mil. So there's one, two, three, four behind there, right, four holes that in place, and then I've stuck in a brand new one at the top as well. I'm going to pop the wheel on and I'll pop this centre cap out just so I can do the hub nut up after I put the wheel back on. Yeah, centre nut there is 213. There you go, that's it in there. Right, so I'm just gonna bash down this so it sort of it becomes like a locking nut um, and it doesn't come off. Pretty bash down now. So that nut's completely Safe, I think it's only 215, and that's bashed down. Let's put the wheel back on now. Just do the wheels up to 120. Job done. 